Let's talk about Apple intelligence. Unless you've been living underneath a rock for the last couple of days or weeks whenever you're seeing this video, you're probably aware that Apple recently did their latest keynote, Glow Time, where they are promoting their new line of products for the upcoming Q4 holiday season. In that keynote, they talked about their new line of watch, which has a bunch of cool health features like a sleep apnea detector by checking the oscillations when you sleep, and also AirPods, which can double as hearing aids. A bunch of really cool features to technology that people are already widely using. But the one thing that caught my ear, and I hope caught yours too, is the fact that that the new iPhone comes with Apple intelligence based at its core. It's designed around Apple intelligence. Now, you may be asking, what is Apple intelligence? Well, no one really knows, but they tried to kind of talk about it in the keynote here. And what Apple intelligence is, as far as I can describe it, is Apple's attempt to capture the AI market. Neural network GPUs, either produced by NVIDIA for data centers or in personal compute, and neural network processors that live inside of a CPU have become much more advanced. And as a result, there's a lot more language model type work that can be done locally on your device. So Apple intelligence is the attempt for Apple to capture that market in a part of the chip that runs a local model that takes the data from your phone and internal to your CPU processes it to make the rest of your phone more context driven. So one of the examples was, when does my mom's train arrive? Siri was trained on the fact that you had that data in your phone and locally knew what time your mom arrived, but not in some cloud environment. Before we get too deep into this, I wanna give my stance on artificial intelligence. I think the technology behind artificial intelligence is going to pave the way for a lot of really, really big advancements in human society. Now, when I say that, I mean the technology itself. You have the technology and then you have the application and the marketization, I guess, or call it the initiatification of it. Lately, I feel like artificial intelligence has been a really, really cheap way for companies to try to sell us something that we don't need. I mean, look at Microsoft Recall, look at OpenAI, like ChatGPT, Sure, it's great, but it hasn't done anything for me that I already couldn't have done with Google. Now, there's the whole argument of will ChatGPT replace programmers, but that's beside the point. Now, as they went further in to the Apple intelligence discussion, I was getting more and more okay with it. They kept highlighting how everything was being done locally inside your phone. So I'm like, okay, they're training a model locally on my phone. They're just making my apps more intelligent contextually of each other. I don't really have a problem with this. And then they, they said the piece de resistance, or I don't, I don't speak Greek, I don't know, man. So they were talking about for the models that are too complicated to be processed inside the CPU locally, they're gonna send it out to a cloud server. And I'm like, oh, okay, so it's just another data siphoning system where they're gonna sell all your data to advertisers, which is frustrating because Apple has been notoriously the number one privacy forward provider, right? Their products are arguably so expensive, one, because they vertically integrate and own the whole chain. They're not subsidizing the cost of their hardware by selling your ad data, like maybe an Android phone is, for example. And again, I'm just speaking off the cuff here. I have no proof that any of that is happening. I'm just saying what I think and how I feel. And I'm also, I'm recording. So if I talk out of my ass, this is just how it goes. I apologize. But then they brought up this idea of private cloud compute. They said the data is all going to be processed in a private cloud, in a cloud that no one has access to. Now, let me be very clear. I am a security researcher. I have some experience doing embedded dev, but I do not work for Apple. I am not a part of the ARM organization, and I am not a part of the con Confidential Compute Consortium, which if you don't know what that is, we're about to talk about it right now. Now, Apple intelligence on private cloud is actually technically feasible. And I want to talk about a little bit how that's possible in this video. Now, again, I'm not, I'm not shilling Apple. I'm not saying that Apple is better than Microsoft or whatever. All I'm saying is that Apple has proposed an idea that is technically feasible that I think we all should give a little bit of the benefit of the doubt and look a little more into it. The reason being, I think the future of technology is going to be very heavily cloud integrated and ARM's confidential compute hardware architecture is actually gonna be a huge player in how we do it. We live normally in this world here in the center and I'll click on this and see if I can get it, oh Jesus. So in normal computing, we live here. We live in this world where we have applications like you're watching this video potentially on a browser on your computer and that lives in execution level zero or user mode as we're traditionally calling it in like the Intel environment, right, in the x86 environment. And then below that is the operating system kernel, which is Windows or Linux or GNU Linux, whatever, I'm not gonna get into the whole argument about Linux versus GNU Linux. The, the operating system is the kernel. And then potentially, if you're in a virtualized environment, you have this higher level overseer that is the hypervisor. If we were to try to do cloud compute with our data in a way that we didn't want people to see what was going on, 
We couldn't do it with this architecture, right? Because the hypervisor being at a higher privilege level can look into all of the memory of the operating system. And the operating system can look into all the memory of the app. So if we were to put our data in an application being ran on Apple private cloud, this would not work. And so what the ARM architecture has done they have been evolving their computer architecture with these additions, right? So we have originally the execution levels zero, one, and two, but then they came out with a thing called ARM Trusted Execution, where now there is code that runs and an entire separate world is what it's called. It's called the secure world, where these applications over here are trusted and cannot be seen by the normal world. And this is actually how the Android architecture right now does all of its secure payments, its fingerprints, all of it lives in an Android ma maintained trusted execution environment. But this doesn't solve the problem where the operating system can't see the applications. There's still a lack of confidentiality here. We're not able to guarantee that the data in the application can't be seen by the OS. And so ARM came out with this thing called the Realm Extensions. And this is where ARM Confidential Compute gets really, really interesting. So they've created this whole new system for computing called realms. So we have the realm world, we have the normal world and the secure world. And what's interesting about this is that unlike the other two architectures where the operating system can see the applications, when you ship a realm application, nothing is known by the higher level hypervisor, the exception level two, about what is going on inside of that execution environment. All of the memory is encrypted while it runs and at rest, and all of the peripherals that that server uses ensure that the encryption is maintained throughout the system. And as a result, if, again, if, I don't work for Apple, if Apple were to employ an architecture like this, it is theoretically possible for them to do secure computing where the iPhone is going to ship an application that is encrypted to this secure computing environment. And as a result, the data could never be inspected by Apple unless you literally had physical access to the server while it was running and you were like manually prodding the RAM with a laser or something. So this is a step in the right direction. But you're probably asking, or maybe if you're a security minded person, you may be asking, how can I trust that this is going on? Like if I push the, I am going to send my data to Apple button, how do I know what's actually going on? How do I know that the data is actually encrypted? This is where the world of confidential compute gets really, really insane, okay? so. I'm, again, I am not an expert in this. This is still like cutting edge technology. I personally am still learning about this, but this is how I understand it. So over on the left, you have your Realm application running, right? And a, and a layer below that, you have the Realm management security domain, and below all of that, you have the monitor that is making sure that the Realm manager is managing correctly, but it still cannot see into your Realm, right? You have a private little world where you're doing your confidential compute, all of your data is encrypted at rest, and you're doing your computation in there. And again, that could be on a GPU. This could be a GPU data center, for example. Now, there's this thing called attestation, right, where like I said before, we're putting our data into a CPU. How do we know what is going on inside that CPU? Firmware attestation is this idea where the monitor is able to collect telemetry from the realm manager and give that information back to some kind of attestation system by taking data measured at boot, like maybe the signature of the code that runs on the Realm Manager, and giving that to us on our iPhone, right? So our iPhone tars up our code to run with our data inside of it. But before we send it to the Apple compute, we say, are you who you say you are? Show me the signatures of the code that you're running. And then from there, we can confirm that that's a code and we send off our blob of data. Now, this is what I think Apple was getting after when they said their compute model could be independently verified. They said that in the keynote, again, I'd put it in the video, but I don't wanna get sued by Apple, which is very possible because they're very big on DMCA. This, in my opinion, is the world of cloud compute. This model where you have your code and your data that runs in the realm world at execution level zero, but cannot be monitored from execution level three or two, and only runs encrypted in these little these little balls. I picture they're just like you give you give it like a ball and it takes care of it. I don't know. And then from there, there is an attestation service that collects telemetry data from the server and says, hey, what code are you running? This is a way where we can have cloud privacy, where your code is only viewable from within the realm that you're running. Now, 
There are attacks for everything. I guarantee you there's probably some cache invalidation or side channel attack or whatever that you can invalidate this whole model. I, I don't I don't know about it personally, <laughs> um, but I don't know. I wanted to talk about it because I hate intelligence products. I acknowledge that they're going to be around forever and I cannot stop them personally. So what do we do? We come up with systems that make them more secure. And I think this, which is what I'm assuming Apple is doing, again, I don't work at Apple, um, would be kind of cool to see. Well then, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, do me two favors. One, hit subscribe and then go check out my courses, lowlevel.academy. You can learn to code in C, in assembly, and a bunch of other cool stuff. Am I lisping? I'm a fucking invisible. Check out this other video about ARM. It's also as interesting, if not more interesting. This is an attack on ARM. See you there.